It's the weekend and time for your Barbados Today Evening News update for January 7. As authorities brace for a surge in COVID-19 cases due to the highly infectious Omicron variant, there are more signals that the physical reopening of schools could be delayed even more. At a press conference this morning where health authorities sought to address the public's concerns about the new variant, First Vice President of the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners, Adana Grandison, said school plants may have to be transformed into isolation facilities once again. It is an active discussion that we're having at this point in time. Um, And I am very much sure that the Ministry of Health If we should get to that point where we do have a very significantly increased numbers, that uh, the Ministry of Health will definitely come back and make the public aware of this decision. Um, Certainly, there are implications on both ends. Yes, we want to keep the country safe. We want to keep children safe. But we also have to weigh that very delicately. And I think that we would also have to take into consideration the various stakeholders um, because children also need to meet their developmental requirements and educational goals. So that is a discussion that's currently being held um, and it is something that they're very sensitive and aware about and I'm sure that the Ministry of Health will come back um, and make a statement about that at a later date when it is necessary. Director of Medical Services at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Dr. Clive Cave, today warned that the prolonged absence from the classroom will have a negative long-term effect on the development of the nation's children. Dr. Cave told the press conference he's hopeful that the Omicron surge will be sharp and short so that children can return to the classrooms. And will potentially have long-term consequences that we're not fully aware of. So getting back to school is an imperative as is the physical health of the children. And that's the balance we have to make from time to time. Omicron, for all intents and purposes internationally, seems to be expected to be a shorter, but steeper and sharper um, effect on the community. So um, maybe unbalanced, school may not um, have to open as planned at the exact time time because of the numbers of infections in the community and not just because of the effect on children. We know that children bring home the infections to the elderly and more vulnerable, but it is not anticipated that as a long-term strategy, keeping children out of school is the best thing to do. So it's a delicate balance. I think we've all been aware over the last two years that the best laid plans are subject to change quite immediately. The wave we're riding now is going to be sharp and hopefully short so that if we all work together and do the things that we know we should do, protecting ourselves with public health measures and immunological protection through vaccination, I think we can get back to having our children in school in the shortest possible time, which is our main objective. Meanwhile, health officials are contemplating cutting the wait time for vaccinated persons to get their COVID-19 boosters. Word of this from Dr. Elizabeth Ferdinand, co-coordinator of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Campaign. At present, fully vaccinated people have to wait six months to take their booster shot. We are currently looking here in Barbados as to whether we should reduce that interval of time. But negotiations are going on. One or two countries in the world have gone down, like England, to three months. But the whole idea of if you're going to introduce it and and when and at what stage, you look to see what is happening within your country. Are cases going up? What kind of age groups? What kind of people are being affected? And then you decide, well, when are you going to bring in your boosters and what you're going to use, right? So right now, it's just one booster we're hoping and let us see what happens. She made a special appeal to unvaccinated persons to come forward and choose from one of the four vaccines available, stressing that a surge of cases from the highly infectious Omicron variant is likely to overwhelm the health care system. With this right here now, beginning of a wave that started already with the 400s and 500s new cases every day, we have to be very careful. We know that vaccine does not completely stop you from getting infected. And we know that this particular variant is very, very infective. So we expect 
that more and more people will get it. And people who get it might not have as many overt symptoms as with the Delta. But the sheer amount of people who might get it will probably overwhelm our polyclinics as well as the family practitioners, as well as the QEH, as much as we try. So we know that vaccines can help and can certainly help you from having to end up at doctor's care or hospital or even intensive care at Harrison College, Harrison Point, sorry. Um, so we are encouraging again, everyone who is eligible to come and get vaccinated. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, a total of 407 new cases, 193 males and 214 females were identified on Thursday from the 1,949 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. The positive cases consisted of 58 persons under the age of 18 and 349 who are 18 years and older. Persons in isolation facilities numbered 176, while 2,394 were in home isolation. A 70-year-old unvaccinated man died at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility on Thursday. As of January 6, there were 265 deaths from the virus. To news from the campaign trail, incumbent Member of Parliament for St. Peter, Colin Jordan, has defended the Barbados Liberal Party's track record in the North since taking office in 2018. Addressing the campaign launch of Dr. Ramel Springer, the BLP's candidate for St. Andrew, last evening, Jordan accused the Democratic Labour Party of presiding what he called the Great Northern Neglect when they held office from 2008 to 2018. Great Northern Neglect of the Democratic Labour Party. The only time that we've had in their term in office decent garbage collection was when there was going to be a state funeral at the St. Lucy Parish Church. Garbage was collected twice a day, every day, for a week. Scandalous people. People who are only interested in the optics. The Barbados Labour Party purchases garbage trucks. That is why they were upset with Trevor Prescott for going to the port to see the garbage trucks. When it seems as though the Dems don't like garbage trucks. I mean, a party with so much garbage should like garbage trucks. The Democratic Labour Party candidate for Christchurch West, Andrew Cave, is suggesting that the decision by the Motley-led administration to employ young people to clean volcanic ash from the roads and debush areas across the island is not enough. Speaking at the DLP spot meeting in St. Michael's Central on Thursday evening, Cave questioned whether more opportunities couldn't be provided for young people. If the government of the day does not intend to empower our people and I call it sophisticated slavery. Just allow people to, to be hard to move. Like, I know, I know they say, listen, when we give the youngsters jobs, the depression program and cleaning the roads, but you mean to tell me that's all you can see our young people doing? Really? Some of these young people got gifts and talents that could be better utilized and used for the further development of our country. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family 
are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings, a Caribbean legend died today. So Sydney Porter, who broke through racial barriers as the first black winner of the Best Oscar Award and inspired a generation during the civil rights movement, passed away at the age of 94. We get more in this report from Warchos TV. I was raised by my parents to be an instrument for change, for good, for respect, and for the irreplaceable qualities of a human being. Sidney Poitier, who broke through racial barriers as the first black winner of the Best Actor Oscar and who inspired a generation during the civil rights movement, has died, the Bahamian Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced Friday. Raised in the Bahamas, Poitier moved to New York at age 16 and worked odd jobs while he pursued acting. He won his history-making Oscar for Lilies of the Field in 1963, a comedy drama in which he played an itinerant handyman whose outlook on life changes after he helps nuns build a chapel. Poitier cemented his film legacy in a single year when, in 1967, with much of the U.S. still segregated, he starred in three films that dealt head-on with racial issues. On the international front, French President Emmanuel Macron is standing by his earlier comments that he wants to upset the unvaccinated given the Omicron threat. What I've said is that being a citizen also means accepting the duties that come with this citizenship. And so we're citizens, we have to accept fulfilling our duties. Yes, I stand by those comments, and that's what we've been doing since last summer. We have a simple strategy, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. And this is also Europe's. Et donc on peut s'émouvoir. And so we can get caught up on a turn of phrase that seems to be too slang, which I totally stand by. And as for myself, I'm affected by the situation in which we find ourselves. The real breaking up of the country is here. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbilistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.